We've all watched benchmark videos and seen all the crazy analytical numbers working away while the creator's benchmarking a video game and wonder to ourselves, how do I get these numbers and how can I do the test of my own? Well, seeing as you're here, I take it you're ready to start benchmarking. Today, we're gonna run down the basics of using MSI Afterburner and get you benchmarking. So the natural first step, of course, is to search up MSI Afterburner on Google. You'll come up to the first page here at msi.com and you just click this and we'll get that and you can download Afterburner. This is, of course, the landing page that they have right now. All right, once everything's all downloaded, it should look something similar to this. Uh, this is the faceplate that's currently out right now the making of this video. Sometimes it looks a little bit different, but I actually like this clean look. It looks really nice. It'll ask for two things to be installed, I believe. It's MSI Afterburner itself. And then over on the right here is a River Tuner statistic server. And it is definitely needed, so make sure that is installed as well. This is part of the back end to get the on-screen display to be working. The main changes you're gonna be making is within MSI Afterburner itself. So this cog icon here is the settings and we will open that up right now. All right, so I hop into Halo Infinite just to have the on-screen display actually showing up in the game. So as you can see right here, I just clicked into Halo and we can see it in the top left corner. Uh, I also have open the MSI Afterburner properties that we opened uh, just before coming into here. And then we have the River Tuner statistics server settings opened as well. Most of all, this is going to be default settings. Anything different would be things like on-screen display shadow and display fill. And as you can see, if we go and look on the top left, you can see the fill changing in and out. And then you can also see the display shadow or stroke changing on the lettering, which is pretty cool. And then you can also change the zooms by just moving this dial here on display zoom. And if you click down here on the bottom, you can see that everything is moving and the whole display itself moves. So you can definitely position it perfectly within your screen. And then jumping over into MSI Afterburner properties, the majority of your stuff you're gonna be using is within the monitoring and on-screen display and well, benchmark tabs, honestly. So you can actually toggle the on-screen display um, by using the control F5 or whatever setting you wanted to put on. I just decided to do control F5. Inside the monitoring tab, you'll see a lot of different active hardware monitoring graphs and it'll show the graph on the side of what is gonna be monitored. And in this case, GPU temperature as the first one. I have that clicked and then it pops up a GPU temperature graph properties section. So as you can see, if I do usage, that would change to the usage uh, graph properties. So each section actually has properties, which is really neat. To make it simple, you can just go into here, show on on-screen display, and then when you uh, uncheck that, as you look up in the top left, you'll see that eventually disappear. Yep, it disappeared. And then when we go and actually check show in on-screen display, that's hard to say. I click apply again and that'll re-add itself back to the top left. So that's how you're just gonna be uh, adding everything to your display. And it's pretty cool in the property section under uh, active hardware monitoring, it does show in OSD, which is pretty neat. Going through those monitoring graphs, uh, I have GPU temperature, GPU usage, going down a little more, uh, memory usage, core clock, memory clock, fan speed. And you can see all this stuff. It's separated into categories in the top left, which is cool. I have to keep clicking in and out of Halo. But yeah, you can see like this right here is going to be your, your temperature. This is going to be the percent usage of your GPU. This is going to be showing uh, how much a VRAM is going to be used on the GPU. And then the percentage... What is that percentage? Oh, fan speed, fan speed right there. See, sometimes I even forget. And then going down into memory, this is gonna be uh, associated with the GPU memory because it is green text as well. So that's kind of cool that they have things separated in those layers. It's using almost five gigs of memory right now. And then you go down, move in, into the GPU section and then in all those GPU things, there's, it's pretty crazy within the monitoring tab. You can literally add every single core temperature, which is insane. And then you can do the usage categories as well, or you can see just the overall average of the full amount on the CPU itself, like CPU temperature, CPU clock, CPU power. And the RAM is also blue too, since I mean, it's pretty much associated with everything on the motherboard. So I guess the RAM is blue as well. And the number within Halo is the RAM usage. And then you can only see my frame rate right here. I do have a capped at 90 FPS since this game is pretty unoptimized almost at the moment, as it draws a ton of power if you don't have 
have frame rate capped, as you can see by the 81% already being used. But you can see this right here. And if we go and jump into a benchmark, which look at the MSI Afterburner properties again, we can hop over to the benchmark categories. If we wanted to begin a benchmark, I have that set to control F8, and then I have it ending at control F9. All right, there we go. It actually had to be closed out. And now you can see everything that's being recorded within that benchmark itself. So heading back into the monitoring tab, the first one, like I said, is just the frame rate itself. And then it goes the frame rate minimum, the frame rate average, and then the frame rate maximum. Uh, right now, of course, is capped at 90, so it's gonna be a little awkward there. Um, the last two are gonna be frame rate 1% lows and then the 0.1% lows. So all that data is really, really nice to have um, up on the screen, being able to be recorded and seen there. And then once I decide to end this, click Control F9, and then that'll end that benchmark right there and we will open that up right now. All right, so here it is. Sorry if this is a little bit awkward in the, the whole layout. So it saves your benchmark within the notepad and then everything I had set up, the average, the minimum, maximum 1% low and 0.1% low frame rates were all recorded within here. And it's kind of cool because it tells you the date, it tells you the time it was, I think, just done. Uh, it tells you what game it was done in, so Halo Infinite. The benchmark got completed within 6,677 frames rendered in 74.360 seconds. So it's pretty dang detailed. And then it also gives you your average frame rate, the minimum, maximum, 1% low, and 0.1% low frame rates all within that benchmark itself. So a lot of great data to present to anybody who wants to check out that game or just for yourself. So that's pretty much the basic rundown of how to get yourself a benchmark within any kind of game and using MSI Afterburner. If you like this video, definitely give it a like. And if you want us to go a little more in depth and try to pinpoint different questions that people have and set up something in totally different random lights. This is literally my favorite way to set up stuff and all the information I feel like is needed within a benchmark, but you can get some pretty crazy results as you saw within all those graphs. If you want to see that, definitely let us know. Feel free to subscribe for more awesome content coming and we will see you in the next video. Peace.